right now. All right, so there we go. And if I switch on, apparently that should light up. And what do you know? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some 13.56 megahertz experiments. What this is about is I was sent some gear from a guy called Nick who is hamspiced on GitHub. I'll put a link to his GitHub page at the bottom now. And basically he wanted help with a circuit to drive some tiny little coils. And uh, there's an example of one there. It's just a little coil with about nine turns of very, very fine copper that he got professionally made and there's an LED in the middle. And he wanted to make a circuit that would light something like that. So in the previous video I did mention this one that would feature in a future video. It seems to have packed up running, I'm not really sure, but it wasn't really valid anyway because it worked from USB. There's a USB input on there and this little circuit can uh, take the voltage upwards to about 40 volts or somewhere. That might have gone, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, it was only about a dollar. But anyway, it did the usual things um, with such circuits. I'll post the actual circuit now. And this circuit was modified by Libmotor to have a 1000 UH inductor on it rather than the 1K resistor at the top. So that's the circuit and that's what this one is. Now the thing is Nick wanted things to run from a CR203 to 3 volt little cell. So I thought well we can junk this idea and move to something smaller. Which was this first concept here. A lot smaller circuit and what have you. Ran from the 3 volts. Originally ran from 5 volts with a keep alive circuit. Ugh, jumped all that, redid it and made this one far neater. Now if I switch this one on and block one of his little coils on, there we go. The blue light is on nice and brightly. It will also work with a modified one of those that I thought needed to have a diode facing in each direction. And that comes on nicely enough. But then eventually did find out <laughs> that the original ones did work. So, moving on to the next experiment, which is to use a couple of pieces of foam and one of these little extenders, as they are. I think they've got a 100 PF capacitor in the middle and basically allow the signal, the strength of the energy, to go further. So what we do is, pop that one there, put the extender on top of that. Just give me a second here. Put that piece on top of there <laughs> and then balance the other one on the top. Right now, lots of people fast forwarding. Alright, so there we go. And if I switch on, apparently that should light up. And what do you know? So <laughs> we've got all that distance now between the sending and the receiving. I think that's marvellous. He does sell all these things on Tindy, by the way. Do check them out if you're interested. He does want some help with these circuits too and expanding the functionality and things they can do. Well, I'm quite impressed with that. Just stack it up and off it goes. Well, okay, moving on. So here's a thought while it's stacked up like that. Can I put this, this one with the two LEDs on the top? The two uh, diodes? And it, yes, I can. <laughs> So that method works too, with two diodes. Now, a bit of a spin on all this is that I've only got one of those 13 MHz crystals. So I thought, well, I'll try and find something that might have a crystal on it. And this is an old Apple motherboard. I don't know which computer it's from. But what I do know is, there's a two-pin crystal there. And if I turn it over, there's in fact another one there. So I'm going to desolder these and I'm going to see what I can do with them. See if they work. The eagle-eyed may have noticed there's another one here. So that's three on this board. Alright, well I've desoldered one of those two pins and then I've actually soldered on a couple of little legs so it can stick into the socket. I have no idea what the frequency is. So first of all, will it work? There we go, nice and bright light. What I've got here is a sniffer coil for the scope, which is over here. And that's just four turns of 26AWG, and please do let me know if there's a better way of making such a thing. But if I put this over the top, 
we should be able to find out what the frequency is. I go over here and there we've got the waveform and 25 megahertz. 25 megahertz is, <laughs> is the frequency of that. So that's great, so at least I know what the frequency of that crystal is and it works. Well, I'm delighted with that. As I say, nice bright output too. So I suppose while I'm here, does it work with one of Nick's coils? They've just got an LED on it and haven't got the two diodes. Let's have a look. I don't actually know. Ha! It actually does at 25. Now that is interesting. It's not very bright. But it does work. Hmm. So as a summary, I've really enjoyed about the past week making these circuits smaller and they only use about between 5 and 8 milliamps. Let me just put a screenshot of that on the screen. So yes, please do consider helping Nick with his project. This is professionally made gear with these coils, the receivers and whatnot. And we're just looking at the best circuit to drive such things with. Okay, thanks very much for watching.